Okay, now we're going to look at a meter test. This is helpful when these IGBTs are still in the circuit and you can't do the uh, battery test. So basically, there's two things we can look at, which is this freewheel diode right here. You can test it on diode check. And we want to make sure these gates right here are not shorted. So we, on this dual IGBT brick, we have two freewheel diodes, two gates. So that's what we're going to take a look at. So first, we'll go ahead and put the meter on diode test. Go ahead and do that, Ryan. turn this light on okay so what we're gonna do we'll look at this diode right here which means we need to go from we need to put our red on two and our black on one so go ahead and close that shroud up I'm on it and let's do that test so red on two black on one okay so that reads good now if you swap them we should read OL and we do so that part's good let's go ahead and check the other one so we need red on one black on three okay so that reads good swap them hmm a little funny reading there check this one here that reads ol check the next one all right, well, that's a little suspect right there. We might want to check that thing out. Okay, the next test we're going to do is going to be the gate on ohms. So we'll just switch this to ohms. Let's start with this one. So we're going to test uh, pin 4 to 1 on ohms. Just go ahead and do this one here, that suspect one. That may be why this drive was bad. Okay, so that reads good. Now we're going to do four, two, three. That reads good. So now let's go over here and pin six is the gate. So you can do six to two. Yeah, that one. Okay, that reads good. And then six to one. That reads good. So we only had one fishy measurement. Which one was that? Go go, go four to three again. Okay, four to one. Huh, everything reads good now. Or was it the diode test we were doing? I don't know. Um, all right, so basically what we've done here is we've checked our free wheel diodes. We've checked our gates. This, this test here is usually about 90%. If it's good on this, more than 90% of the time, the IGBT brick is good. And you can do this test when you've got all your bus bars hooked up. You just have to look at your schematics. And um, actually, here, here's an example of one right here where you can do that test with the bus bars hooked up and everything. You just have to, you know, get to one side of your bus bar. If it's, a, say, a three-phase AC motor, you just have to know which one goes to where. And as long as you have a schematic, that's not a problem. And you know, so you can do this test with the unit power down without disassembling anything. So it comes in handy. If you have access to the IGBT brick, the battery test is a little bit more accurate. When testing these diodes right here, a lot of write-ups actually recommend you to jump the gate to the emitter. On this would be pin 4 and 5, which is right here. We're going to go ahead and do that now. Um, having said that, I've never seen that in an elevator test procedure right up. All right, go ahead and swap it. Okay, so that reads good, but let's just go ahead and pull it off and we'll see that we actually don't get any different reading. Swap it. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Maybe there's uh, a reason you may want to do that. I've never experienced it and I've never seen it in any of the elevator test procedure, but there may be some situation where it is necessary. All right, in our next video, we're going to take a look at some Intellimod IGBTs, IPMs, and look at how to test those and talk a little bit about the, the differences.